Hey guys, welcome back to Chaos Core Tech. My name's Garrett, and today we're going to be talking about this machine right here. Not this guy. Pretend this guy's not here. We're going to be talking about the Moai. So I'm sure some of you know what this printer is, others may not. Um, this is what is called an SLA printer. So whereas like the CR10 behind me here is an FDM printer where it takes spools of plastic and extrudes them out layer by layer and builds up an object, this printer actually uses resin, which is like a really goopy liquid. And it uses a laser underneath to shine up, hit the resin and cure it in place. So it's effectively still building up by layers, but it's quite a bit different of a process than regular FDM printing. Now I'm not gonna go into too much detail on the differences between SLA and FDM. I might make that type of video in the future, but for now I'm sure there's other videos on YouTube that will explain the difference. I will lightly touch on that, but for the most part I'm just going to be talking about my experiences so far with this printer. It is not a full review as I haven't had enough time to fully gather my opinion, so this is just kind of a first looks, my first experiences with it, um, and I'll also talk about the assembly process and stuff like that. Okay, so first let's talk about the process of assembling this thing and getting it print ready. We got the kit version, we did not get the fully assembled one, but if you don't want to go through this, they do offer a fully assembled version. But if you want to save quite a bit of money, um, go with the kit version, because in my experience, um, it was extremely easy to put together, and when I put this together, I didn't really have experience building a printer before, so it was coming from a point of not really knowing what I was doing. So basically all it is, is you put together this frame, it's just some extrusion, um, bolted together, so all you have to do is just put it in place, screw it together, and then there's a few other platforms to put in there, but they're very easy to do, and then you put the electronics in. And then after the electronics are in, you put these walls on, and you're pretty much ready to go. The whole process took me maybe uh, four or five hours to get this assembled and doing the first print, so not bad at all. The instructions are very straightforward, pretty easy to read, and there's also a video series on YouTube here from one of my friends that runs the channel Practical Printing. I will put a link to his playlist down there. He does a full assembly guide of this. He walks through it step by step, assembles it live on the camera there, and describes it for us to follow along. And it was very helpful because there was a few things that I didn't quite understand what the instructions were saying. So in those rare occasions, I could pop over to his videos and see what he did, and maybe if he explained it in a different way, I could understand what was going on. But overall, this is a very sturdy machine and was not too difficult to put together. And as you can see, I actually have a print hanging in there right now that I have not removed. That's actually Mr. Poopy Butthole from Rick and Morty. I'll have a video on that coming soon. But as you can see, it prints upside down. The platform up there lowers into the vat full of resin. The laser will cure that layer and then it will move up and cure the next layer. Now there's lots of post-processing and stuff that you have to do after it's printed, like you have to dip it in alcohol to make sure all the resin's off of it. You know, just making sure that the print's pretty clean and then you do have to cure it further by using some sort of UV lamp or UV lights of some kind. I'm not going to detail that whole process right here. I might make a video eventually talking about what we do once I kind of figure it out a little bit more and feel a bit more comfortable with that. But as far as how this machine actually prints, I am blown away at how good it is. I've printed about six different things on this printer that I'm going to be using for the channel, so they have to be great quality, and I'm very, very picky about how they look when they come out, and they came out great. Way better than I can get on these FDM machines. I never actually had the printer fail to do something that it should have been able to do. Every time I've had a failed print, which I have had, it's been due to something that I did wrong in the pre-processing of the model to get it ready to print before I actually get it to the printer. And if you've ever used an SLA printer, you know that supports are key. If you don't have the supports just right, um, portions of the model will not print correctly. And that's where most of my failures have been. So it hasn't been a fault of the machine. It was that I'm too experienced and didn't know exactly where I would need supports. And so that really brings me to my only complaint about this printer so far is that it does not have dedicated software. So in order to take a model, like say that I make the model in ZBrush like I did for Mr. Poopy Butthole here, um, I have to take it through like about five different programs to get it ready to um, be printed on the Moai. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but uh, someone like me who's pretty inexperienced with SLA prints, it can be a little frustrating because I have to do the normal stuff like run it through Mesh Mixer just to make sure that the model is all good. But I do that type of thing for my uh, FDM prints as well. But then you have to go and add supports, which I use XYZWare because it has these really nice um, cross-connected supports. Otherwise, the supports uh, tended to fall over because they just weren't strong enough or thick enough. I had a lot of people telling me to use B9 Creator for supports, but I did not have much luck with that at all. 
but I actually do take it into B9 Creator just to put a little platform underneath of it because it has some really nice um, like peel up edge type of bases that work really well for this. And then after all that, I take it into Simplify 3D and scale it up about 10%. Just because in my experience, XYZWare, these supports don't hold the part extremely well. Like I was having prints that would peel away from the support just because the, the contact points weren't big enough. So I just take it with the supports added to the model and scale it up so those contact points are just slightly bigger and that seems to work flawlessly. And then after that, the model is finally ready for slicing. I take it into the Moai version of Cura, which they'll have you download as part of the getting ready process. Um, and it will slice it up, poops out a G-code file, and there's just an SD card reader on the front here. You stick it in, make sure that the resin's in there, and you're away printing. So the only reason that it's really a complaint from me is just because I'm inexperienced. If I knew what I was doing with SLA printers, this would probably not be an issue at all. I'd probably be able to look at it and just be like, oh, okay, this part will need some more supports. I'll need to do something different here. But right now, I'm kind of just like, eh, throw supports on there and let's see what happens. And that can be quite an expensive learning process. But ultimately, I think that is beyond worth it. I've been using this thing a ton, and I plan to use it a ton more. I've got a bunch more bottles of resin ready to go, and I'm just going to keep cranking out models on these things. Um, I'm going to show you a preview of the models I've got printed already that are just waiting to be painted, and then I'm just going to keep printing more because I've got several other models that are ready to go that I just have not sliced up and printed yet. So if you want to see more of this, make sure you get subscribed down below because um, most of my upcoming videos are going to be models printed, post-processed, painted, making them look real nice um, using this printer. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about my experiences with this printer in those videos. And those should start coming out in the coming weeks. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring that little bell so you can get notified when I post a new video. So like I said, this is not a full review. Um, I will be doing a full review once I've had a little bit more time to work with this thing and fully form my opinion around it. But for right now, I am extremely happy with this. I truly believe that this is the best SLA printer for its price because I've had experiences with cheaper SLA printers, like I have a Wanhow D7 over there, and it's caused a lot of problems and just has a very small build area. So I actually regret getting that one. This one would have been a much better choice at that time. And this thing is like a third of the price of the Form 2, and the resins are like half price compared to the Form 2's resins. So if you are looking to get into SLA, I would 100% recommend this printer. So if you wanna check out some of the specs of this printer and learn a little bit more, I will put links to where you can find this printer down below. And those are affiliate links. So if you end up deciding that you want to buy one of these and you buy it using that link, I'll get a little bit of a kickback from that. And that will all go back to buying more resins to test out more things and bring you guys more videos using this machine. All right, guys. Well, let me know down in the comments what you think of this printer. Let me know if you have one of these, if you're thinking about getting one, if you're just kind of interested in SLA, but never really thought about it before. Just let me know what you're thinking down there. And then that's going to be it for me, guys. Thank you for watching. And until next time, keep creating.